All right, YouTube, this is Detroit's HPTV coming to you on a Sunday. Now, I wanted to wait for this topic until Monday, but certain things can't wait till Monday to be spoke on because they're that urgent. In this video, the things are alleged because YouTube wants to censor the truth, so you have to say allegedly, but I'm going to let the clips and th different things speak for themselves. I'm going to show you a clip on what happened in New York. New York has fallen, to be exact. Okay. While well, we've been distracted with Kamala Harris and Trump and the community, black Americans and white Americans are divided over politics coming out of the Democratic left. And the Democratic is so far left that let me tell you what has happened throughout this country. Throughout this country, and to this day, right now to this day, while Kamala is doing her campaigning, she could stop the flow of immigrants coming across that border. Immigrants have been consistently flowing through the border over the last several months, while at the same time, they are reducing funding to them. They are putting them out of certain shelters. And a whole lot of them allegedly are out of Venezuelan prisons and are of Venezuelan gangs. So now you've been watching all these isolated incidents throughout the country, but for some reason they give the immigrants plane tickets and bus tickets and train tickets. So they have become a national issue you know even in detroit out here they're running up in houses and homes out in bloomfield all throughout this country the immigrants some of them have resorted to crime and a crime is a organized crime they are used to dealing with communist regimes and they are used to that type of anarchy so that makes them far more dangerous than any everyday criminal or gangbanger that you may be used to they come from countries that have been very hostile to their citizens and the citizens have been very hostile towards their governments so what i'm telling you is they have been breaking into a lot of gun stores up in Colorado. You can Google it yourself. You can fact check me. You know what I mean? I'm standing on the First Amendment, but Google yourself, Google, or go over to Michi X channel. Michi X has more footage. So if you, if you guys know who Michi X is, she did a video on it, and you can find out the location and how many gun stores have been robbed of their weapons and their ammunition. So, if you were them and they mind, and you seen this campaign and you see how Americans are behaving with each other and how divided they are against each other, and then they have a candidate who looks like he's going to win and his first thing that he's going to do is deport you, what would you be doing since you're used to that kind of anarchy? And what about the regular everyday citizens who don't have enough sense to stick together, who don't understand why these young black women keep going up missing in their communities, never to be seen again, coming from school or going to the store, but Kamala ain't stopping none of that. They run around here telling you guys, defund the police. Now, how dumb is that? Y'all still saying defund the police. Which, when when y'all don't see exactly what's going on in your communities, your communities have become war zones and you have become the weakest link because you are divided against each other and you have no unity and you won't stick together and they've opened the back door on you. That's enough of my commentary. I want to show you this clip. It's for fair use in the 1976 Copyright Act for educational purposes.
and commentary under the First Amendment. Like and share this video. Please, people need to hear this particular message. Check this out. New York has fallen. Gunpoint in Manhattan are charged with criminal possession of a machine gun. Police say the two men approached the officer and demanded his keys at West 146. So a shocking new wave of crime has fallen upon New York City. But although critics are quick to blame the asylum crisis, what nobody wants to admit is that although New York's laws make it a sanctuary for immigrants, they also make it a sanctuary for criminals. Strong outrage after yet another video emerges showing police getting attacked by migrants. It happened as they were trying to make an arrest at a shelter on Randall's Island. The Adams administration is still currently reviewing whether to install metal detectors at some of these shelter locations. Christian Inga is set to face a Queens judge on a slew of charges linked to an attack in Casino Park. Other residents on this University Heights block believe recent asylum seekers toured a park. They're coming in on motorcycles and mopeds. So we've seen a spate of some very brazen cell phone robberies, and it's been attributed to a Venezuelan gang called Tren de Aragua, which has its origins at a uh, prison outside of Caracas. Anytime you have 3,000 people who are placed in an environment that they cannot work, they have to sit around all day. Things like this have the potential to happen. We waited seven hours you know, all day, all night for him. This man says Inga Landi likely would have gotten away if not for him and about six other people who helped detain him. <laughs> Need a pickup truck for your family, but on a tight budget? Listen up. Banks are selling unclaimed or repossessed pickup trucks. Crime is now so bad in New York, some are now calling for a repeal of its sanctuary city status. But what nobody's talking about is that even if you take away every single one of the city's sanctuary policies, you're still stuck with a justice system that makes this place a sanctuary for criminals no matter where they're from. A haven, so to speak, for violent gangs to roam our streets on mopeds, stealing phones and purses, where you'll also find open-air theft markets operating in front of the very stores crooks are stealing from, and where if you get in trouble for anything, you oh, can assault oh, the police and be released without pay. Just like the six asylum seekers that shocked the nation with their attack on the NYPD late last year, an attack we now know has emboldened every criminal in this city. And we're not just talking about asylum seekers. Over 200,000 of whom have come to New York, most with the intention of obeying the law and starting a new life for themselves. But right now, the city still has a shelter population of around 65,000 people, all of whom were promised jobs, but are now trapped in tiny hotel rooms in America's most expensive city, which is no excuse for crime, certainly, but... Could you imagine any city that had a population of 65,000? One city has a population of 65,000 homeless immigrants. Not just with their own uh, homeless problem and veterans and all that that's been in their community. This influx and the drugs that came into their communities and the guns and the violence. This is Kamala's America. You have to think about this. Where are all these missing children going from inner cities? You see it all in your timelines on your Facebook and people are sharing all these missing kids. Where are they going? And y'all are listening to these Dems talking about defund the police. You all around here talking about abortion. Don't you see what's happening and what's, what's, what's about to happen? Watch some more. It doesn't need to be because the justice system here makes excuses for criminals every single time they get arrested. And no matter what crime someone commits, nine times out of ten, the district attorney's office will drop or downgrade the charges until dangerous repeat offenders are either set free completely or let off with a minor slap on the wrist. But it gets even worse because for months, reports have been circulating of dangerous gangs exploiting the U.S. southern border, using it to infiltrate our city with their underlings, who are now reportedly making alliances with local New York gangs, expanding their criminal empires, and recruiting vulnerable individuals from within New York's own shelter populations. But what's most alarming are the latest attacks on police, which keep happening because if the police aren't safe in this city, no one is. Now, two armed men believe to be Venezuelan migrants. 
Ambulance, carjacked an off-duty NYPD officer in Harlem. What's, what's the solution here? How do we stop this surge in migrant crime? Well, we need to secure the border, Stuart. We, we need need to. more personnel. Did you hear that? We're not going to. Now, whether or not you agree with that statement, one thing's for sure, we've got elevated levels of crime because people don't really seem to care what happens to them after they attack the police. And in this story, two dangerous individuals robbed a police officer of his personal vehicle when he was off duty. It all happened at 11.30 in the evening as the officer was sitting in his 2020 BMW, which was black. And the criminals who approached the officer may have thought they were just going through a normal carjacking, which they'd probably done before. Either way, these crooks, they approached the black BMW the officer was sitting in with their weapons drawn and when the officer tried to draw his weapon they knocked it out of his hand disarming him and then they demanded his keys got in the car and sped off into the night but wait until you hear how heavily armed these thugs were jose rivera and jomar crespo they're charged with criminal possession of a machine gun firearm among other charges police say the two men approached the officer and demanded it remember not too long ago in this in this video i told you about the outbreak in them robbing gun stores. If they're robbing gun stores and they've robbed a lot of gun stores, allegedly in Colorado lately, and they are dispersing throughout the country on buses and different things, because I'm quite sure they're getting more sophisticated by the day. They're learning our ways and our habits. They're learning our weaknesses. They're learning our vulnerabilities. Can't you tell? Did you hear that? These criminals had fully automatic weapons. That is a level of firepower, a force multiplier that puts the entire city in danger that the police may not even be able to defend against. In fact, we're talking about a level of armament that might require a military response. Now, although the criminals in question gave information stating they were from Connecticut, the New York Post has revealed that they are actually recent immigrants from Venezuela. And apparently these guys have tattoos that link them to dangerous Venezuelan gangs. But that's not all. Apparently the names they gave to police might be fake. Apparently they told police they had left their IDs at home, which is pretty convenient since their plan that evening was to go on a crime spree and steal vehicles at gunpoint. But after stealing the officer's black BMW, the car itself was found just a few blocks away from where the robbery happened. They had ditched it, and police were able to track down the vehicle because when it was stolen, inside was one of the officer's Apple devices. So they just pulled it up on one of his other phones and found out where the car was. And after finding the abandoned vehicle on a side street in central Harlem, police were able to find the criminals nearby. And the reason this is so frightening is because even though these people identified themselves to the police, we have no way of knowing if what they told the police was accurate. And that's because apparently before people enter the United States, they have a habit of discarding their identification. Some, though, are dumping their IDs altogether. I have come across piles and piles of discarded documents on the U.S. side. This is happening before they're even apprehended by Border Patrol agents. Now, the idea here... Now, look, there could be many reasons why someone would want to get rid of their ID before entering the United States. After all, not everybody who's come here wants to join a gang and commit crime. And many people are under the impression that coming into the country without any ID means you get a clean slate because the authorities have to record whatever you provide to them and hope that you've done it honorably without lying. But apparently this type of system is being exploited by a small minority of people who wish to come here and do something other than live the American dream. There are criminals who have it in their best interest to sneak into the country and make their way to sanctuary cities where they can live for free while living a life of crime by taking advantage of the generous safety net offered to the less fortunate by cities like New York. And they're able to do this because so many people in other parts of the world are living in such dire circumstances that they'll do anything to get into the country. And the last thing they want is for their name to pop up in some data database that links them to somebody who they're not or for their country of origin to be the reason they can't get into this country in the first place which is a huge problem because even though most of the people entering the country don't wish to harm us or the police the next person on our list did something even worse than a carjacking and they never should have been in the country to begin with <laughs> in a public park in New York City, an environment that you think would be safe because this is a place where people go to relax, they've got their guard down, but sadly, New York City's lawless environment now means that places like this could be some of the most dangerous anywhere in town. Get out the 
Christian Inga is set to face a Queens judge on a slew of charges linked to an attack in Casino Park. Police say Inga is a migrant from Ecuador who entered the U.S. through Eagle Pass, Texas. So this is an unbelievable story, not only because of the awful deed that was committed, but because of what it took to bring this person to justice. So this story revolves around a recent immigrant from Ecuador who singled out two teenagers in a park the other week, where sadly he attacked them during broad daylight in the middle of the afternoon. But even though this attack took place in an environment many thought to be safe, and even though the teenagers went and got help almost immediately, the perpetrator still escaped from the scene of the crime. And this person would have escaped if it weren't for some incredible detective work by the NYPD because they were able to obtain security camera footage revealing the suspect's face. And after those images were released to the general public, it didn't take long for locals to figure out who this person was and where to find them. And even though criminals in our city might not be afraid of the police, you definitely don't want to step on the toes of local New Yorkers who are upset with you. This video shows Christian Giovanni Ingaladi on the ground just outside this deli minutes after Jeffrey Flores says he spotted him. I come and I just, like, grab him out the store. Flores and others in the neighborhood say they'd seen him at the store earlier and waited for hours to see if he'd return. The group says they used this belt to tie Yeah, so the type of justice this person got when the locals apprehended him is entirely different than the way the justice system in New York normally operates. And what's surprising is not only did this person suffer immediate consequences for their actions before being turned over to police, the district attorney is not prosecuting the good Samaritans who ended up apprehending apprehending this person, which sadly happens a lot to local residents of this city when they defend themselves. But once the images of this suspect were released, local residents realized that this is someone who frequented a local bodega, and they decided to set up camp there and wait for him all day. And mind you, all of this transpired a couple of days after the attack took place before anybody had been arrested. 24-year-old Jeffrey Flores recognized Inga when the NYPD released these clear photos of the 25-year-old riding away on a bicycle. You know, I hate to say this, but in New York City, with our progressive justice system, had the police been the ones to find this guy and had they been a little rough with him when they brought him in, he may have, in fact, been released. But since it wasn't the police... I'm sure you get the picture. But at this point, this was from a couple of, couple of days ago when, he, when this went up. And I shared this clip. It's far worse because every day that we wrapped up into the politics that are going on with Kamala's uh, identity base ran candidacy, they still come across that border. They still trafficking people through that border. They still moving drugs through that border. They still moving weapons and people through that border. while we laugh, dance, and don't take it serious. But think about it. You know, there's reports that in houses that have been empty, migrants are living in them, living in empty buildings, because there's a steady flow coming into the city. That has not stopped. All while the politics has been going on every day, why people are making videos about who said what or who did what. The country is being overran, but the board is still open. They didn't even, it seems to me they have stopped counting at this point. You know what I mean? They keep giving you the old numbers, the numbers from months ago, when they was talking about 20 million migrants and this. That's from months ago. At this point, they have stopped counting. Obviously, they stopped counting, right? So the migrants have gotten sophisticated, and as I said before, they're watching the politics. You know, and in their mind, a Trump win means they get immediately deported. See, think about, you know, if you ever like lived in the streets or been through things in life, you know. You have to be careful what you say, especially if what you say sounds like a threat. You can't threaten people and not trigger the self-defense uh, flight or fright mode in their mind 
So they either going to run or they're going to fight. Now, can you see somebody who snuck in this country running out of it? When it's time to fucking, when it's, excuse my language, YouTube, when it's time to leave, do you see them running out if conservatives win? I'm just asking, do you see them running out? Because they've already been threatened. See, that's the in interesting dynamic that we fail to uh, even consider because we've been dealing with so many other petty politics. But even that level has become a politic because guess what they found out, allegedly. You know, think about everything I'm saying as allegedly, cause, so I want you to, to give, let you hear what I'm saying. They have gotten to the point to where immigrants are uniting with other immigrants from different countries because they're agreeing to themselves that we're both immigrants, so we should stick together. They're talking about sending us back. They're cutting the benefits they were giving us. They told us we could come here. You know, we didn't know nothing about their politics, but they let us come here, so you can't go back. And at the mean, and at, and in the meantime, look how weak their populace is. Look how weak their gangs are. Their gangs aren't aren't even fighting over actual land that they could drill on or or grow, grow a farm on. They fight over pieces of concrete. So by now, clearly they have assessed our thinking and assessed our weaknesses because they're exploiting it every day. I just showed you how they're exploiting it on one level. That's the broad daylight level. Think about what's going on after dark that ain't nobody getting out there recording. Well, I've said enough for you uh, today. This is a good mess. I think y'all should uh, share this because you know YouTube not going to put it out, but this is something for us all to think about. So, sign to you at Detroit. It's Detroit's HPTV. Support the nonprofit Detroit's Black Thought and Ash Collective in Detroit. That cash app is in the description. As always, salute to all patriots. Keep your head on the swivel. Peace, like, share, and subscribe.